In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Google AdWords Keyword Planner to find more keywords and to find the search volume. At the end of the video, I'll also show you a cool free tool that we use to take all of our keywords from all of our different keyword research sources and group the keywords into tight, relevant groups so that we focus our advertising just where our buyers are located. Now, in order to get access to the Google AdWords Keyword Planner, you do have to have a Google AdWords account. It just takes a moment to set up. It doesn't cost anything. If you're asked to create an ad while you're setting up your Google AdWords account, you can go ahead and create the ad. Just set the uh, cost per click to a penny and set the budget per day to uh, $5. And then as soon as your account is set up, just go back in and pause that ad. That way you won't be charged anything and you'll have your Google AdWords account set up. And once you have your Google AdWords account set up, you can then click up on tools and go to the keyword planner and that's where we'll begin. So if you wanna follow along this video, you wanna go ahead and do that step first so that you can see exactly what we're seeing on the screen when you do your own searches. Now, once you have your AdWords account set up and you log into Google AdWords, you'll notice at the top there's an option for tools. If you click on tools, you notice there is an, a menu item for keyword planner. If you click on keyword planner, you'll be taken to the Google AdWords keyword planner. The page should look like this as of September 2016. So first of all, if you just want to find new keywords, you'll be clicking on this first option here, search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. If you click that, you'll notice this box opens up here. You have the option to put in a specific keyword. You could put in a landing page or a competitor's landing page, or you can use product categories. Uh, usually most people will just put in a keyword like how to fish or uh, cooking recipes. And then once you do that, you have the option to select your targeting. Uh, by default, all locations, all languages, Google, and negative keywords, that's what you'll see here on this side. You can set up keyword filters, and then you have the ability to turn these keyword options on. You also have the ability to change these settings once you've done a search. And then for the date range, it'll show average monthly searches for the last 12 months. Again, you can click this little pencil icon here to change this value. And that is the search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. If you already have a big list of existing keywords, and and you just want to get the search volume data and trends, you can click on this second option here. You'll be pasting in your list of keywords here. Again, you have some targeting options here. And when you click search, it will grab the search volume data and trends for those keywords. The third option is to multiply keyword lists to get new keywords. Now, let's say you have some seed keywords. You could put the seed keywords on this side and put another list on this side. So let's see, fishing and tips and we could do bass, and then it would do bass tips. Um, so you multiply your list by putting two keyword sets, and Google AdWords Keyword Planner will mix and match those sets and look for new possible combinations. This is a great but underused feature of the Google AdWords Keyword Planner, especially if you assume, because most of us do, that people would search for things like we would search for things. And oftentimes the order of the words in the keyword search is not the same as how we would do it. And so we overlook those terms. You can also click to add a third list and you can just continue to go on from there. So you could have a list one, two, and three, and it will mix and match and and find new terms. So this is a great tool right here, the multiply keyword list to get new keywords. Now, let's assume you're trying to plan your budget for Google AdWords. You're gonna create an ad and you need to plan the budget for that. This section here will allow you to get your click and cost performance forecast. Now, let's assume we want to just find new keywords. So we're gonna click this box here and we'll just put in a sample keyword, how to fish. And then we'll leave all these settings the same here. And then we'll click get ideas. Okay, so you'll see now we have how to fish was our keyword. Uh, you'll see all locations, all languages, Google, and negative keywords. You'll see these options are again here repeated so you can adjust them. Show average monthly searches for the last 12 months. And then you'll see we had keyword filters, show broadly related ideas, hide keywords in my account, hide keywords in my plan, and keywords to include. Again, all these are settings you can adjust. Now, if I click on the keyword ideas tab, you'll notice I have my original term here, how to fish, and I have the average monthly searches, and it's showing 9,900, and then it gives me some competition and some suggested bid info. If I hover over this little trend icon here, I can see the individual months, and so I can see the trend of fishing goes lower in the winter and then increases in the spring and summer. If I hover over any of these individual bars, 
I can see the actual number of searches per month at Google for the term I've selected. Now, according to Google's own help documentation, this number right here represents the number of times people have searched for this exact keyword based on the date range and targeting settings that we've selected. Since we have all locations, all languages, Google, and we don't have any other restrictions going on here, you'll want to watch to the end of the video because I'm going to show you some different places to get accurate monthly search data so that you can make better estimates about how many times a keyword is searched for. Now, you may have noticed uh, there was a change made recently and Jennifer Slegg over at SEM Post, the SEMPost.com, made a great uh, write-up on this after uh, getting gathering some data from some different users. Basically, Google has started to just put ranges for those that don't have active AdWords accounts. Now, we said back in 2012 that we thought eventually the search volume data would be removed for anyone who did not have an active AdWords campaign simply because they didn't want to give the data away to just everyone. They wanted you to be spending money on Google AdWords to get the data, and as of September, September 14th of 2016, that has started to occur. So they're basically putting this range, 10,000 to 100,000, which basically means the data is worthless. I mean, you really can't know. Between 10,000 and 100,000, there's a lot of play in there. And um, you'll notice this this individual, when they did a search, they got this uh, message here. You've reached the maximum number of page views for this day. This page now shows ranges for search volumes. For more detailed view, check back in 24 hours. Some users are reporting that there isn't any information given at all uh, for these. It just depends. I think this is a role out of a new feature that Google's doing with their AdWords. And one customer service rep from Australia, a Google rep said basically you had to have an active AdWords account that was running campaigns for three to four months. Now, if you're watching this video, don't assume right away that you can't get the data because I'm gonna show you where you can get the data for free still, even if you don't even have a Google AdWords account. So you wanna stick around for the whole video to see that. Let's go back to the Google Keyword Planner. And I mentioned that we were using this search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. Now. If you go down here to this option, get click and cost performance forecasts, you have the ability to put specific match types in. So a broad match would be how to fish. A phrase match would be in quotes, how to fish. And an exact match would be in brackets, how to fish. Now we should get three very different results for these because this is saying any keyword that contains the word how to or fish or any synonyms or close uh, latent semantic related terms to this this keyword so this is going to be very broad uh, this says the keyword has to contain how to fish in that order but it could contain other words around it and it doesn't necessarily restrict it to just this exact term but by putting it in brackets we're saying only show us the number of times someone has typed in the exact term how to fish now, i've already gone ahead and run that search here and i'm going to show you this here now, what I've done is I've chosen all locations, all languages, Google. I haven't put any negative keywords. And I said, give me forecasts based on the next month, but show them as monthly forecasts. Now, just to show, to make sure we're not restricting any of our data, I said I'd be willing to pay $999 a click just to make sure nothing's being filtered out because of my bid. And then I said my daily budget was $50,000. Again, making sure nothing would be filtered out because of my bid. I don't have any campaigns running for this term, so there shouldn't be any negative effects of an existing campaign that they're applying to these numbers. And you'll notice here that showing monthly amounts, they say the exact match of how to fish gets just 835 searches per month. That seems a little low to me, but we'll, we'll go with it for now. Then on how to fish in a phrase match, Google's saying there's just 1,784 searches per month that includes that uh, how to fish. And then how to fish broad is showing 8,000. Now, if we just quickly look at these no numbers and do a rough estimate, we do get pretty close to this number right here. So I'm starting to question exactly how Google is figuring up this exact search here. Uh, it may not be exactly what we're thinking as far as exact match. There might be a little bit of padding of the numbers based on phrase and broad match and kind of coming to more of an average of these numbers here. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, we've always advised you test your keywords first before you do any SEO. So from an advertising perspective, it's not that big of a deal because you can put your ad up on Google AdWords. You can uh, set your budget for your campaign and you can actually see roughly the number of impressions before you invest a lot of time and effort into SEO. Okay, so let me point out another place that you can get some great information from the Google AdWords Keyword Tool. And the tool is called Keyword Keg. 
it's just a Chrome extension. Uh, once you install it in Chrome, you'll have a little icon in the toolbar. If you click on that icon, you'll see there's this option to get metrics for my keywords. If you click that there, you'll be given a text box and I'll just put in how to fish and then there's a button here. I'll click get search volume and you'll see now we have how to fish and 9,900. At the time of this video, this is a free plugin that you can install. I assume all this data is still free. It was when I installed it, and so I assume it is for this video. Uh, but you'll notice we get the exact same uh, information we got back from the Google AdWords Keyword Tool, and that's because Keyword Keg is actually using the Google AdWords Keyword Tool API to get this information. So anyone can go that has Chrome or Firefox, you can install this plugin, you can create an account with Keyword Keg, and then all you have to do is just simply put in your keywords and hit uh, Get Search Volume, and then you will be given back the search volume information for those terms. Uh, so anyone can do that. So that's one way you can get the information if you're noticing that your Google AdWords account has this average range, this restriction that's been placed on as of September 2016. I want to point out a couple other places you can get great information on search volume besides the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. Another great place to get search volume data and to find new keywords is actually the Bing Ads Keyword Tool. So you'll find this at bingads.microsoft.com. You do have to open an account to get access to this tool, but again, take a few minutes to fill out the form, set up the account, and then you'll be able to use this tool for any website, ad, or campaign that you have. Once you've logged in to bingads.microsoft.com, if you'll click on Tools, you'll click on Keyword Planner, you'll be taken to this page. And it looks very familiar, doesn't it? Because it's very much based on the same concepts as the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. You have the ability to search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. You can multiply keyword lists to get new keywords. You have the ability to get search volume data and trends if you're planning your budget and get performance costs and estimates. So it's very similar to the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. Again, this is another tool. I'm just gonna go ahead and click here on search for new keywords. We use the same term so we can make some comparisons here. Type in how to fish. Uh, then one thing that is different about the Bing Ads Keyword Planner is by default they have United States, United Kingdom, Canada, on a, and Australia as the targeting. If we attempt to remove all these to just stay worldwide, you'll notice it just defaults back to these. So you would actually have to go in and add a bunch of additional countries. For now, I'm just going to leave these four countries here. Uh, we'll need to take that into account when we do our estimates. So then here we have the option to select the different properties. There's Bing, AOL, and Yahoo Search, owned and operated only, and there's the syndicated search partners. So I'm gonna leave this middle option selected here. We'll leave the keyword filters alone and we'll let the average be from the last 12 months. I'll click Get Suggestions, and you'll notice here we're taken to this page, and right away I want you to look at this tab, Keyword Suggestions, go ahead and click there. Now we'll see we have this How to Fish, and you'll see that their average monthly searches is 83,260, which is quite a bit higher than the Google Keyword Planner gave us earlier of 9,900. But we have to keep in mind they're doing a little bit different estimates uh, at the Bing Ads Keyword Tool. First of all, they're not taking into account broad phrase or exact match. Now Google said they weren't either. They said it's based on the exact searches. But this looks much more reasonable if you were dealing with broad phrase and exact match across all these properties being AOL and Yahoo. So this is going to be a little bit exaggerated uh, in our research has shown. Uh, you can click on the trend here and see the number of searches. We still see that trend where it dips down in the winter because people don't do as much fishing in the winter and then it comes back up. So this can still be useful for general trend information. We have found that the Bing ads a keyword tool is actually more accurate when we just get to the long tail term. So let's look at this term right here. You'll notice it says it only has 20 searches per month. And if we click here, we can get the trend data here. And uh, what we found to do a good estimate idea, if you want to use this tool to get estimates for Google as well, is just multiply this number by seven. Uh, for the longer tail terms, okay? So for these longer tail terms, multiply by seven and you'll get a pretty good estimate of the type of traffic that's available for that term in Google. Now realize that's just a rough estimate, okay? So I'm gonna show you another tool that you can use that's also helpful. Now we're over at the Bing Webmaster Tools. So this is bing.com forward slash webmaster. And again, you have to have an account for this one. Again, take a few minutes to sign up for an account. You'll be able to use this tool over and over for any websites, ads, or campaigns you're running. And once you're logged into Bing Webmaster, you'll need to go under Diagnostics and Tools, 
and keyword research. I've gone ahead and I've put in how to fish. This tool is a little bit differently set up than the Bing Ads keyword tool, so let me just walk you through this here. First of all, you'll notice we have the ability to just instantly select all countries and regions. We can select all languages or we can restrict to a specific language. This is an important feature in this tool that's not available in the Bing Ads uh, keyword tool. That is the ability to set strict, which is Bing's way of saying exact match. So if you select this box, you're saying I only want data if someone typed in the exact keyword and not any other keywords that would contain the phrase and not any broad or um, uh, latent semantic index type terms. You're basically telling Bing, I only want search volume data if they typed in my exact keyword, not if they typed in broad keywords that are related to my keyword or contain my words, or if they typed in a keyword that contains the phrase, only show me search volume data for this exact term. Now, you need to know the Bing Webmaster Keyword Research Tool only stores data for the last six months and it's ref refreshed every other week. So what I've done here is I've selected the last six months for my date range and I've checked the strict box and I've done a search here and you'll see I have how to fish and it appeared in search 2,790 times. Now that's over the last six months. We can cover the mouse over here. We can see some trend information, which it can be really helpful to see actually. Uh, they've got a great little trend tool here that's just really visually appealing and easy to see the trend line that's occurring for the search term. But what we need to do now is we need to use a little bit of calculation to figure this up. All right, so I've brought up the calculator here. Now we see that how to fish was searched exactly 2,790 times at bing.com over the last six months. So I'll put 2790 into the calculator. Then I'm going to divide by six. So there's about 465 times per month at bing.com the exact search how to fish was put into the engine. Now we're going to go ahead and multiply that times 7 because that's our average estimate number that gives us closer to what Google has. So now we get a number about 3,255 times per month at Google uh, this term is typed in. Again, these are rough estimates, but they're pretty accurate rough estimates because we've done some research behind the scenes. We've looked this up. It won't work the same for every Every market. Obviously, there isn't a perfect overlap in the demographics between a Bing user and a Google user, not even close. But for many markets, for me, I don't, most markets, it might be a stretch to say, but for many markets, this will be a perfectly fine way to estimate. The only way to know for sure would be to actually run a pay-per-click campaign at Google AdWords and have bids high enough and a quality score high enough that you get all the impressions and then to just basically do the math on the number of searches per month. Again, you still wouldn't be able to do that for a whole year unless you had a lot of money to spend on that campaign. So this is a great secondary way to make some estimates. You'll still get pretty accurate averages between keywords. So you'll still know which keywords have a lot more volume than others so that you can know which ones to focus on. Again, we always advise for you to set up a pay-per-click campaign before you spend time on SEO and content marketing simply because you don't know the type of people that are behind that search if they'll actually convert for the product or service you're offering. So by setting up a pay-per-click campaign, you can spend a little money on the front, but you can save a whole lot of time and effort on the back because if you go to all the effort to create an SEO campaign or a content marketing campaign around a term that isn't actually your target audience, you've wasted all that time and energy. It's it's much easier just to set up a pay-per-click campaign and test the traffic and see if it's the type of person that buys your product or services. Then you'll spend your time doing your content marketing once you know you already have keywords that represent buyers for your products and services. Now, once you've used the Google Keyword Planner to find lots of new keyword ideas, what do you do with all those keywords? The biggest problem is that you can. there's so many keyword tools out there you can get hundreds of thousands of keywords by spending a day using the different keyword tools. But what do you do with all that information? The answer is a cool tool called Keyword Grouper Pro. And Keyword Grouper Pro is completely free. There's not even an opt-in. You just simply download the tool. Now at the top of this video, there's a link. If you'll click that, I'll show you exactly how to use Keyword Grouper Pro. It doesn't matter where you got your keywords from. I'm going to show you how to take those keywords, group them into tight groups, and then you can set up your campaigns and know exactly which groups represent buyers. And once you know where the buyers are at, you can simply focus your marketing in that area to make more profit in your business.